We read the elections in Africa and praise God for giving us victory. And we even go to churches and mosques to do thanksgiving and say God gave us victory. Has God become an accessory to criminality? We crave popularity without responsibility. Popularity carries responsibility. I say you cannot. I say why? I say because I'm Dr. Apoki. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. We are at the conference hall of Petra Christian Academy. Okwokoko. And I want to do a video on the paradox of the African faith. You see, your faith is an amalgam of your belief system. And to a large extent, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. That is to say, the way you live is a reflection of your belief system. I was in a commercial bus coming from Port Harcourt to Worry, and a young man hawking medication in the bus said that he passed an exam that he did not write. He did not sit for the exam, but he passed. And he shouted, praise the Lord, and people said hallelujah. Can you imagine that? You passed an exam, you did not write. The paradox of the African faith is that we have failed to realize that God looked up to Adam for the management of the earth symbolized by the Garden of Eden at that time. Jesus looked up to the disciples to do greater works than he did, but will keep bothering God with things that he expects us to do. We bother him with responsibilities that we are supposed to handle. God will not conduct elections for us. God will not change leaders, bad leaders that we have voted into positions of authority. God will not clean our streets. The tragedy of the African situation is that we want promotion without performance. You want promotion without performance. We want to practice democracy without the people's consent. We don't want the, we don't need the people's consent and interest for us to practice democracy. And then when the military takes over in some countries where they have found out that the interest of the people and the interest of their nation is not uppermost, then you will see sit tight political leaders who are murderers, who have violently remained in office condemning coups that did not shed blood. It bothers me how we reason. We want our personal interests to become public agenda and public responsibility. When somebody talks about the interest of his country, most times it is his personal interest and his personal agenda. We read the elections in Africa and praise God for giving us victory. And we even go to churches and mosques to do thanksgiving and say God gave us victory. Has God become an accessory to criminality? We crave popularity, popularity without responsibility. Popularity carries responsibility. We want proceeds without process and principles. We want to earn good salaries without 
good work. We steal our wealth in collaboration with foreigners and then we store our wealth in their countries and then turn around and collect loans from them and beg for aid for them, from them. Sometimes when our presidents go overseas, like one of the recent meetings they had in America, they drove bigger, bigger cars, their convoys were longer, and they stayed in big hotels, while those they were going to pay beg for stayed in simpler hotels, cheaper hotels, shorter convoys. I wonder what is wrong with the psychology of the black man. We destroy our hospitals and travel overseas to spend dollars for treatment. We spend our wealth overseas, buy buildings overseas, destroy our economies, and when we die, we want to be buried in the same Africa that we connive with foreigners to rape. Something is wrong with our minds. I remember in medical school, the king of Saudi Arabia used to send his family to the University College Hospital Ibadan, where I trained for treatment. And I schooled with people from Hong Kong, people from the United States, in the same medical school in Ibadan. Today, we have destroyed our hospitals. We go to Dubai, we go to India for treatment. We destroyed our universities, and today we send our children overseas and pay expensively in dollars and still expect our, the value of our Naira to be high. We want financial prosperity without financial intelligence. And we buy what we cannot manage and what we cannot maintain. You want to drive Mercedes Maybach, Lamborghini, Rolls Royce Phantom in a country with the worst roads you can ever imagine. Where will you drive them? How will you maintain them? We don't think. We want financial prosperity, as I said, without financial frugality. We want to stand before kings and princes without diligence. No, the Bible says that. Have you seen a man diligent in his work? He will stand before kings and not mean men. We want wealth without savings. We want wealth without productivity and frugality. We raise our funds to receive miracle financial alerts, monetary alerts, deposited in our accounts, without ever thinking whose account was that money withdrawn from. Anyway, we believe that our money can be taken to Coven without balancing our earnings with our expenditure. How much did you really work that was taken to Coven? How much did you spend? We, we establish visions without supervision. You establish a vision, you don't supervise that vision. Supervision. Superintending so over a vision. I came here to, to supervise the admissions in the school here. And by my just being here, a woman saw me and realized that I was the owner of the school and I had preached in the church, she understands. She said her children must come here. Assuming she brings four children and she pays me a hundred thousand naira per child. That's 400,000. That's 1.2 million a year. Times 10 years is 12 million by just coming and staying here. Another woman saw me, oh, and said her children must be here. I discussed with the teachers that came for interview on Saturday, and they said they insisted they must work here, that they are not going elsewhere. That was because I came to provide supervision. My daughter stayed here till 7.30 in the evening to 8 o'clock before she went home. She came to conduct the interviews. If you have a vision and you can't provide supervision, 
your vision will be less than you, will be destroyed by those who don't have vision. Oh, we complain about corruption, but we celebrate corrupt politicians. We even make them chief, chief or thief launchers during our Thanksgiving. If these corrupt politicians, chief or thief launcher does not come, our Thanksgiving service has, will not start. We then pray for God to protect them and to bless them. What kind of human beings are we? We go to Jerusalem, Mecca, and Rome, but we return to our chaotic and backward nation. And we have not dared to ask ourselves or God, why are we backward? At least he will tell us. Asian young men and women are advertising their brains while our young girls are advertising bombs and buttocks. And in old age, when they become poor, they will blame the devil. Our faith must translate to responsibility. If not, we are hypocrites. We want destiny help us without helping any person to fulfill their destinies. Life is not a gamble. Life is lived according to principles. If Africa must progress, and Africans must progress, if they must prosper, if they must do well, they must follow the key principles that other nations have followed to reach where they are. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Subscribe to this channel, like it, share with others, and you can join my WhatsApp mentoring group by sending a message to plus two, three, four, seven, zero, five, two, one, three, six, seven, six, three. And we have properties for sale. You can also send a message to plus two, three, four, seven, zero, five, two, one, three, six, seven, six, three. And we have a beautiful school here. Bring your children. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles. Ah, uh, Pokey, God bless you.